Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of In the Black, a series that talks about how to make your business more successful than it already is. And we have our resident expert here, Ken Mann from Freedom Financial Solutions. We were talking about the nine principles to be successful and keep your company in the black. We talked about principle one last week. This week we're talking about principle two, which is when is a deal a deal that's good for both parties. And I guess we're talking about sales. Now. Yeah, well, marketing, sales, you know, and our advertising, all three of those kind of go together under the function that we call marketing in terms of the nine principles that we're laying out. So the marketing function is identified as, as a way to how do you bring customers to your door, to your business, to your online site, and ultimately culminate in some sort of a sale. So ultimately, principle two is a deal is only good when it's good for both parties, right? So often, businesses need to have sales to be successful, right? That was principle one that we went through. And so the good, they have to be good sales. So what does it mean to be a good sale? It has to meet or exceed the needs of your customer. And it also needs to provide profit and a living for you as the business owner. So that's the identity of what a good sale is. So, but a good sale has to be good for both parties. That's what you're Correct. talking about yep. in this principle. So give me an example of when a, uh, a deal is good for the company, but not good for the client. Okay, so a deal that would be good for the company, but not good for the client. Let's say you produce a product, and one of the things that makes your project is some widget. And so you find some low cost provider for that widget, but that's also turned out to be very poor quality. So you are able to sell your product and make more profit because you got a lower cost piece inside of your product, but then when it goes to the market and the people start to use your product, it starts to fail and the quality starts to go down and people become upset because they're using a product that is no longer successful, it's been failing. And I'm sure many of you have experienced where you've bought certain products that have been known for quality and then something has happened and now they're not so good anymore. You know, you can think of different brands, you know, over time that have had that happen to them. And it's not a good deal when it helps the company in the short term by making more money and having increased profits. But if ultimately the product becomes inferior and starts to fail, you're going to start to get bad word of mouth, and we know bad word of mouth in today's social media days sure. is not going to be beneficial for your company yep. in the long run. Word so gets you, out there yep. quick. <laughs> so you win in the short term, and you lose big in the long term, and now your product is. And that could be true even if you're a service provider. Yeah. You may vendor out uh, printing to some printer. You may, in our case, I may vendor out bookkeeping to uh, a bookkeeper in, in India who isn't very good, for example. So the, it's not just in products mm -hmm. that are assembled, it could also be in service related fields just as well. Okay, so then on the other side of that coin, uh, when is a deal good for the client, but not good for the business? Yeah. So that happens when you really don't understand the cost to deliver your product or your service, and so you end up providing that product or service at a rate less than what it takes you to provide it. So I like to use the example of Larry the Long Guy. So Larry the Long Guy worked for a landscaping company, and he found out that that landscaping company was billing out $80 an hour for Larry's time. Well, Larry's like, and he's only getting paid $30 an hour from the landscaping. So he's like, I can go out and I can bill for $45 an hour. I'll make $15 an hour more than I was making previously, and I'll throw that other guy out of business. So Larry goes out and he starts offering the services at a lower price, and all of a sudden business is booming. What Larry didn't realize was that he has to pay for equipment, he has to pay for repairs, he has to pay for gas, he has to pay for insurance, he has to pay for maybe employees to help them. And before he knows it, six months, a year into his business, he's actually so far broke, he's borrowed from mom and dad, he's mortgaged his house, and he's losing his shirt. So he had a business that was bringing sales in at an incredible rate, and yet the more sales he brought in, the more money he was losing because he wasn't pricing his services appropriately. So that's when a deal is bad for you as a business owner, but good for the client because they're getting services at a much lower cost, and yet you can't really afford to operate your business that way. So your role then is to speak with business owners or whoever it is, the principals of the company, to try and identify uh, if it's a good deal for both parties? Correct. Okay. So we, you know, one of the roles that accounting plays is to help the business owner to understand what, how to price their products appropriately to make sure that it is mm -hmm. a deal that is delivering value to the customer, but also is making sure it's profitable for the business owner. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things that's so strong about these, these series that we're doing. Because as business owners, many people are so busy 
doing their business, they don't have the time to be able to educate themselves. And so hopefully this segment educates you a little bit and you, you find out the resources that are available to you to maybe help you out. Even if you've been in business for a while, you might need to know uh, whether they say, if, if you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. and, and if you don't know your measurements, you, you can't grow your business. Right, and that's where accounting comes in. Even though this principle is talking about marketing, accounting, once again, is the reporting function that tells you how well your marketing, your sales are doing. All right, so yep. that'll take care of this particular principle. Yep. Next week, we're gonna talk about how to grow your business geometrically. We'll see you next time.